Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. So I'm Josh Topper, and today we're gonna do a shop tour video um, that everybody's been asking for. So come on inside. Don't mind the mess, there's a lot going on. Um, it's been just hectic and I haven't had time to clean, so. Come in the door, I got my 18 CU Monarch right here, and behind that is the Mori Vertical Slaughter, and all the big stuff is over there. And then got the two Bridgeport Series 1 J heads. I got a bench over here with a whole bunch of tooling, and a shelf with a bunch of tooling and parts, and, and then the Worcester Shaper that I've been working on slowly, um, putting a VFD on it new drive and everything, that thing was a, a complete basket case when I picked it up. An absolute mess. Um, had a one horse, 110 motor on it and a three speed gearbox out of something. Just a disaster. So it's got a three horse with a VFD on it now and I just gotta do all the fine tuning. My 12CK Monarch. 12 by 36, I think it'll do 14 and a half over the ways. But it's been a, that was actually the very first machine I bought. And it's been a, been a great little lathe. And then over here is the newest upgrade, the Cincinnati number no. two, two ML horizontal mill. And I just finished at it adding the digital readout to it. Got three axis DRO on it now from machine DRO. Um, just a, a great digital readout, uh, magnetic scale. Works, works incredible. Um, been very happy with it. And the Cincinnati vertical milling attachment. So now this is a more useful machine. And then the old Warner Swayze that I only use for drilling, turret lathe. Drilling and roughing, it's pretty wore out. I, I paid $51 for this thing. Um, and I seriously thought about scrapping it the day I picked it up. But it's been a good machine. Dude, it does a lot of drilling. I've used the ever living crap out of it. Everything's kind of packed in here. Um, I do have a surface grinder back here in the corner, an old brown and sharp that I hardly ever use it. I haven't had a need for it at all. Um, that was a line shaft machine that I rescued and modified a little bit, but I never use it. have no need for it. Um, it could probably go away at some point, but I rescued it. <laughs> Another little tool storage room and some material and all my bolts and whatnot. And it's a disaster too, but I know where everything is. Got my rack back here with all the measuring tools on it and dividing heads and, and parts that I've done and vices and miscellaneous, lots of miscellaneous. Um, right here is the hydro pump I use for testing the steam engine boiler. And one of these days we might have to do a video on doing a hydro test. That'll do 2000 PSI, so we might have to uh, blow up a air tank or something. There's a lot going on in here, too. I've been working on, actually, this, 
This is a video I'm working on right now. This is the, the tongue for the water wagon. Um, and I'm working on that video right now, showing building that. Um, I don't have the footage of the sawing um, because we had a little camera accident on the sawmill, but uh, we'll do the rest of it. Um, this is getting treated with boiled linseed oil and uh, should come out absolutely beautiful just like the rest of the wagon did. And then uh, right here, just off of it, is the Lucas 441B48 horizontal boring mill. You got 48 inches of table travel, left to right, 54 inches of saddle travel, so in and out with the, the, with the table on the saddle, 48 inches of vertical head travel, and then the spindle has 24 inches of travel as well. So pretty, pretty big machine, big capability. Um, I can't remember what the job was I just did on it, but um, I still got one of my bearings set up on there for doing a, a line boring job I did recently um, that I didn't shoot. And right here's the line boring bar I made for that job. So quarter, a quarter inch square, square holes broach through it and set screws for each of the cutters. And the job went really well and there's supposed to be more of them coming. I don't know when. And then another rack of tooling and miscellaneous. Um, Here's some fixtures that I've built. Um, this is a drilling fixture I made for one wagon to uh, get my holes straight through the through the beams. I clamped it on there, perfectly spaced, and then used a auger drill to drill through the beam. So this was clamped to the wooden beam here, just guiding the lens straight. So just a simple little fixture. Here's a drill fixture for drilling a hole through a round part on offset with a drill bushing in there. I used to use this a lot until I fired that customer for being a pain in the butt. So we don't use it much anymore, at all anymore actually. I just keep it as a conversation piece. We got some lifting lifting apparatuses there. Um, there's a big 15 inch Bridgeport rotary table back there. There's a 20 inch Kearney and Trek underneath. Big rotary table that I bought for use with the boring mill. So I mean, there's stuff all over this. Right here is actually the table off of a shaper that I picked up recently to use as an angle block, an angle plate. Um, that was given to me by another fellow machinist, along with this entire holders and you know, two inch holders for the boring mill. So I've got the, that's a Morse taper six in the boring mill, so this goes in and then I've got all these holders of varying sizes and shapes. Um, I think there's four of them, five of them in here that are collet style, so another great addition to have. Another mess of toolbox and junk. <laughs> and then hiding back here is the American Tool Works eight foot planer with the Bridgeport head on it. So I bought that machine, basically it was scrap, and uh, pieced it together with the Bridgeport head, and it's been a very good machine, and I've had to do some modifications to it. So when I got it, it the controls were scattered between the box over here, a box in the back corner, and another box up here, and it was kind of a pain to run it. So then I consolidated everything into this control cabinet to make its life a lot better and it's so I got the Bridgeport control here for the head and then this is all table drive 
and then emergency stop cuts all the power. And I got a pipe threading machine there that I picked up cheap for the steam engine work I was doing. And a pipe bender from Harbor Freight, which actually worked really well. Um, my boiler inspector was very pleased with my pipes. And the Carlton, four foot, 11 inch, four foot, four foot arm, 11 inch column, radial arm drill. A lot of guys say that a, a radial drill will, will just take up real estate and make, not make you money, but this thing, this thing gets used very frequently. Um, it's been an absolute money maker all along. Um, I, there's a lot of things I couldn't do without it. Um, that, that fixture I was showing a little bit ago um, would get clamped to this table, and then I use that drill and do them parts. with the, I got the flood coolant set up on here, and I just run it. And uh, why well, it did a beautiful job on that part. And this thing, I don't know if anybody knows what this is. This is a clipper belt lacer. This is a big 12 inch one. It's a yeah, clipper number 12. Um, they're very rare and rather expensive if you can find them um, for making up flat belts. So for my steam engine or the planer or that kind of stuff, it's, I picked this up a while ago and actually I've wound up uh, getting a couple jobs where I've needed to use, set it up and use it. Um, so it'll, it'll pay for itself eventually. And back here, I haven't used it in a few weeks, but when the jobs come in is the big Monarch. This is a 25N. Monarch. So it'll swing 27 and a half over the ways, um, nine foot between centers, and it, uh, I think it'll do 14 inches over the cross slide, 14 inches on the steady rest, I think is what it'll do. So it does, does some pretty good size work, but uh, Again, it's not big enough. There's, there's days where I definitely need a bigger lathe. But I got this thing so cheap that I couldn't pass it up. Came with that three jaw, nice, nice three jaw on there, a four jaw, um, and a four jaw scroll chuck. So it's got the four, you can adjust the individual jaws, or you can adjust, uh, um, then it's got a scroll, you can adjust all four together. So you can kind of use it for production type four jaw work. All my tooling and miscellaneous here for the lathe and the radial drill and some planer tooling up here. Uh, a while back I did the video on making a boring bar for the big lathe. And here it is. Well, that's two inch 4140 pre hard with a, oh, what, what brand was that? Um, but it's just a interchangeable head. I've got a couple different choices. But this is a CNMG 642 on here and that's been a good insert. I've been using quite a bit of that. And yeah, these are Kendex, so Ken of Metals. Pretty simple, but I needed a big boring bar a few years back, and I made one out of 1018 and got the job done, but I never, it never performed well, so I made this one. Um, did a video on it recently, so it's been a pretty good, pretty good bar. Seems to hold up well. Yeah, it's kind of cramped in here. I just need more time to clean. My Johnson, my 10 by 10 by 18 inch capacity. Um, it's a pretty good size saw. They started building these in 1937, as far as I understand, and then uh, Dake bought them out in I think the 90s, and Dake is still making them. It's and they're a great saw. This thing has got a lot of miles on it. 
It was, it was well used when I bought it. I've rebuilt a few components on it, but I got it on wheels so it's easy to get around, get it out of the way. And just a quick fan I built for the, for the shop back before I had air conditioning in here. Um, piece that together out of a, uh, that's a radiator fan out of a, uh, I'd like to say a Jeep 9 locomotive. Um, we got a few of those. No, actually that's out of an F7. That is out of an F7. Um, so we scrapped one years ago when I was doing all the railroad stuff on a regular basis and so I saved a couple of the fans and boy it makes an awesome shop fan, moves a lot of air. And then uh, Mori Vertical Slaughter. This machine, I went and rescued it out of a guy's garage, his dad had it and, and uh, when he passed away they sold all the other tooling. He had a little lathe a buddy of mine bought in a mill that um, there was some family drama went on with all this stuff. And well, this was the only thing that the family couldn't sell without anybody's knowledge, and, and they couldn't move it. And it's 92 inches tall, and we got it out an 84 inch door with with some modifications, but we got it out. Um, Nobody, no, everybody said it couldn't be moved. We, we moved it. And then here is my, my AV sensitive drill. This is a, another great machine I'm glad I bought. Um, we've had it for quite a few years. It's set up with a, a pedal switch here that actually reverses the spindle. So, so for tapping, it's, this is an awesome machine just for power tapping. Um, I use it quite a bit. Uh, it's got a two horse motor on it, so it's got plenty of power for, for a lot of stuff. I think the biggest I've tapped with it is, I'd like to say five eighths, but it's been a great, great drill. Then I got in the shop, here in the machine shop and, and one in the welding shop, I've got two, two vices. Both are set in the concrete and pipes filled with concrete and then they're pinned so I can take them off if I need to and put something else on there. This plate is actually pinned. Um, this was a swivel vise, an old Athol, and I welded that solid. I hate swivel vices. They just never work. Um, so I welded her up and it's been a, this has been an awesome vice. The one I got back in the weld shop isn't very good, but it works. So yeah, the place is an absolute disaster. I've been staying pretty busy lately, so I haven't had time to clean and organize like I'd like to. Um, it's, it's been a struggle, but um, trying to get as many things done as I can before winter hits and I can't do so we've been been doing as much in the shop here as I possibly can. There's, it's just there's always something, um, something going on, or you know, even out in the yard. So we're trying to do as much of the out, that outside stuff while there's an opportunity. Just been a crazy year. Um, so hopefully soon here, when things turn, the weather turns to crap, I'll be able to get out and start, uh, or get in here and start cleaning and organizing and and maybe get rid of some stuff that I don't need. So that's my shop. Um, <laughs> as, as much of a disaster as it is, and I know you guys have been begging to see it, um, and maybe someday we'll get it cleaned up and we'll do another, another video and do a little better. Um, and I'll probably do a video on miscellaneous um, tooling and accessories for the machines. But um, like, as you can see, we're really well equipped here. Um, and another time we'll do the weld shop. 
um, tour and probably the sawmill tour, an ex explanation on the sawmill, how, how I built all that. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's it. That's, the, that's my disaster, my, my, <laughs> my mess. Um, like I said, hopefully weather, once the weather starts to turn and I can't do outside stuff, I'll be in here and get this organized again. Uh, but I know where everything is, so it seems to work out. So with that, we'll end here. Um, please check out my website. I have a new website up and running, www.toppermachine.com. And like, subscribe, and share. Stay with us, see what's next. And until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time. <laughs>